My first memory of making art was uh, at school and there was a, um, I would never have art, but one of the, one of our teachers was an artist and an art teacher. And so for about maybe three years, there was art at Colony. And, and so I think I was a freshman and so they just combined all the grades. We weren't a big school. I'm sh sure there were 50 or 60 in the whole high school. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was pretty small. Um, and, and so it w I had this opportunity to, to learn to draw and to learn, you know, lettering, make posters. And, and I tried pretty hard, but I just could see that I, I felt like I didn't have the talent, you know. And, and what's interesting about this is uh, the, the, the Cheyenne and Arapaho Indians who went to school there, they, uh, um, they love that class and probably as much as they disliked all the other parts of it and all of the other, you know, discipline parts of it. But, but they love that class and they, and they love the art teacher. And that was like the first time I, I saw those, those young boys really relate to uh, a, te a teacher or someone who was not Indian. But that really was the first time I ever uh, connected with art and, and then, um, and I was good in math. And I was good in math and English, and so I majored in math in high in in college, and I minored in English, and uh, and those two things I think fit very well into art, and I but I but I didn't I didn't take an art course, which I would have <laughs> now. When did you get involved with the Caddo Cultural Club? And I guess, are you and your husband living in Oklahoma City then at this point? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, we were. Um, it, it was probably in 1990, maybe 90, 91, I think. Um, I, I'm trying, yes, that's when it was, about 1990, I think. Um, there was a, a man here in in Norman, and and there was another man in Oklahoma City um, that said they're they're doing these classes down in Binger, and you know they're they're practicing the dances, um, and I think uh, his name was Phil Newcomet here, uh, and he his wife was Caddo, but he was so interested in he he was probably more Caddo than. Most cattle's because <laughs> he he knew the dances and the language and and the customs and uh, and so when he went down there, well, I would ride down there with him, and it was really it was really interesting. I I think they they had a cattle dance once, and it was over about ten o'clock, and they said, well, "Why is the dance over?" And it was mm -hmm. because the only singer who knew the songs. <laughs> Was was ill and he had to leave, and they and they said, you know, we, this has got to change, <laughs> and that's when I became involved. And one of the, and, and in nineteen ninety one, I believe, it was uh, the Texas Archaeological Society was holding their, um, I guess they call it uh, the archaeological dig or archaeological project. And they were they were holding it on the Red River, uh, on the Texas side, but there were no uh, there was there were no um, place for them to stay. So they crossed the Red River and they stayed at the uh, Holiday Inn, I think, uh, in Idabel. And they invited us to Idabel, the Culture Club, to dance and and sing. And so we went down there and. I, and while we were there, we, we went to the Red River Museum, and there had been a fabulous collection of cattle pottery uh, on, you know, by, by <clears throat> excuse me, um, 
by, by several people, but most of all by the owners of the Red River Museum. And they let us go in the back and look at them, and it was just astonishing. You, you know, and, and I was thinking, I can't believe I'm seeing this, and I can't believe that I did not know about this. And so it was kind of like a connection to my mm -hmm. history, to realize the cattle were there in Idabel. They were on the other side, and that along where Idabel is, along the Red River, both sides, there were uh, little towns, cattle towns, of uh, all up and down that the bend there, and just it, it, uh, the amazing, their amazing, uh, prolific, and talented uh, abilities in clay. Just amazing, you know. Um, but but I just kind it, you know, and it just kind of like um, it, it's it sparks something in me. And I think first you can say, why didn't I, you know, why wasn't I taught about this? But none of us had. And there was a man in his uh, 80s, I think late 80s, and he was just thinking, you know, I I didn't know this. And so even though I had kind of a inkling of history, like from the workshop, um, and and I and I, you know, had read "Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee" and you know all of these things. It was kind of actually Pan Indians, you know, mm -hmm. and and yet when we went to Idabel, we started out with the turkey dance, and then we sang the drum dance. Then we did the fish dance. And these were things that, I mean, you know, Randlett Edmonds and Wimpy Edmonds and the other singers, uh, and there were, I, I would say there was about less than 10 singers at that point, there's, you know, that gathered. And they, uh, when they, you go to powwows, well, they weren't singing cattle songs any more than they were like Creek Stomp Dances or, or you know, all the other neat songs. But, um, and so when, you know, we were dancing, and and I think the next day, we, this one man, his name was Dr. Jim Corbin from Stephen F. Austin University, he gave a, a ceramics lesson, and he had clay, you know, and each of us got a little bit of clay, and he showed us how to mold it, and... Now, was he, excuse me, was he, um... Was the ceramics lesson like for any anybody attending the conference? Right, it wasn't targeted for. It was targeted cattle people. It was targeted for cattle people. Oh. And and the other archaeologists weren't there uh, except the ones who were interested. Well, I guess all of them, all of the archaeologists, were interested in cattle life, pottery, customs. They were all artifacts, you know, and and. But Jim Corbin had been studying uh, old, old ceramics tradition, so he had some of his uh, pots there. And after we started working on this, uh, he showed us a firing, and it was like just right on the ground. It was kind of a little bit rainy. And some of them, you know, popped and broke. And, and he said, you know, usually this doesn't happen, but it it had to be kind of the wet weather. It had to be... Um, I don't know, other conditions. And and then, so what I did is I took that knowledge, <laughs> which wasn't much. And it was your first experience even working really with clay, wasn't it? It was the first experience, except when we were making clay dolls on, the, on our creek, you know, on our farm. Uh, but that was my first experience and had not... Um, but I did, that's not what I did, because what I was doing at that time in 91 and 92... Uh, was I was I was trying to get a cattle newspaper started, an independent one. But that's what I was doing. I wasn't doing mm -hmm. clay mm -hmm. until 1990, the late 1994. And I had gone through some things, and you know, and I was trying to get my life back. And was I going to go back to teaching? And I thought, but while I'm doing this, I can at least you know in encourage other women to work with clay. And so I started making 
pots, and I thought... In association kind of with the cultural club, or it was your way no, of encouraging... Okay. Well, I, just, but I, just me. Mm -hmm. and, and my idea was that I would just, like, get all these people to, uh, you know, join in. <laughs> We're kind of really... <laughs> And, and but I but I started it and I thought well I'm learning a little bit more and I'm learning a little bit more and so I just I didn't I didn't have any I didn't realize there were resources out there I didn't realize the University of Oklahoma had a major collection and that they had books that you could actually look because I, I didn't I didn't of of Caddo pottery of Caddo pottery oh. or you, you know the Red River Museum. So I really just kind of like was doing it on, you know, just trying to learn about it. And I didn't know what clay, I, in fact, I, I was just using any clay. In fact, there was, I, I think there was someone at, uh, oh, I, I, I'm trying to think where I got this clay, but it was just like, they said, oh, it's just all the clay thrown together. <laughs> so that's firing. what I was using, that's yeah. <laughs> Well, this this particular pot is one that is probably a replica of the one that is in the Oval Office, mm -hmm. and um, and it belongs to my sister. And the the particular design would be from like around Nacogdoches, Texas, and this design on this bowl is one that you would find. Uh, it's, it's called Natchitoches engraved, and it, it would be like Natchitoches, Louisiana, and it's kind of midway between Shreveport and and New Orleans. I mean, that's where the town is. Mm -hmm. This is a piece that I made for Red Earth uh, two years ago, and um, I think it won. Oh yeah. Uh, in the traditional division, um, but it is. This was a f figures that was found on a on a uh, shell from spiral mounds, mm. and I I assume an, an ornate shell um, that I believe that is at, is at the University of Oklahoma. But there are two there are two figures there, and I call them the Hasine twins mm. um, because the Caddos had. Um, in their religion, they had a Shanisi who was at the who lived or took care of the the temple on the mound or the temple in the village, and he would he would go to a box that held the Kononisi, which were the twins, and there were two boys, and they and he would open them open up the box and, and it would talk to him and tell him what to do. Um, and when the Spanish priest came, he said, uh, he said, there's nobody in that box. You know, why are you doing this? So he would go from his, he went to his church actually and pushed his way in um, and opened the box, went past the Shanisi and opened up the box so there's nothing there. Um, but little realizing that he believed in the Holy Ghost that no one had ever seen <laughs> or heard God. <laughs> so, at, at, at any rate, it was it, it was just like such an interesting moment. And so, but I, but I did do this and put instead of on a shell, I put it on a pot, mm -hmm. uh, representing and representing um, some of the things that I know that this would have been the coon dance, the raccoon, mm -hmm. uh, because we have a raccoon dance. And actually, I don't think we do it now, but we did have. You want to talk about this piece? Of the it? tripod is uh, the tripod in for the archaeologists. We call it friendship engraved, but mm. I call it. I named it Tasha because mm. Tasha is the word for friend in Caddo, but it is a fairly good representation. Of a pot that I I saw when I went to um, a picture of it when I went to the Red River Museum, and mm. um, but it's 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 very interesting because in I think in the Caddo 
world, there is there's a three a tripod. There's the sky, mm -hmm. and there's the middle, the earth, and then there's the underground. And I do not know if that's what that represents, but I think uh, a tripod is uh, is interesting. The other thing about the tripod is that as a math teacher, <laughs> and you know that when you have th three, it can sit level or, you know, it isn't. If you have four legs, it, it, there's that possibility of it being a little bit unstable, which is, which you see like when people are, have a campfire, they'll, they will put three sticks up right. and then hang their pot from under there. Um, that's the most stable. And that's the most stable. That is, that, that's a very form. stable form. And I was talking about the effigies uh, that I see, or that I use. The the duck here um, is an effigy. We have the, we have the duck dance. Mm -hmm. uh, Kan Ka Ocean is our duck dance, and uh, in the back one, you can see um, this is a probably a very good example of Caddo forms, mm. uh, and on it I did put. Uh, a dancing turkey, mm. and and I call this Nootka Ocean. And I wrote actually wrote Nootka Ocean on the back, uh, and Nootka Ocean is our turkey dance. Nootka is um, turkey. 